Whenever new viewers find my Insomniac Spider-Man videos or hear those opinions, I always get the question, what do I think of Wally West? If you're new to my videos, I've repeatedly spoken against duplicating characters or creating redundancies within brands to the point where even I'm tired of hearing myself. That is not to say that it can never be done well, but my preference would be to just not do it at all. I don't think the few instances where it works well should validate an approach that floods the market with an original counterfeit product you will always get more misses than hits that way. The point of the Wally West question is usually at best a genuine innocent inquiry, but most times it's a gotcha question to try and unearth some perceived hypocrisy because people think I have an ulterior motive. Really? This is the internet, so that's fair. I keep explaining the reason for it in random posts, so I thought I'd just address the topic as a video for once and for all. Like I'm discovering in my Spider-Man comment sections, a lot of this stuff is generational. I read a few odd issues here and there as a kid, but my first proper introduction to the Justice League was through the animated series. People who have watched my videos will know this, but I like light-hearted, goofy characters, so I was immediately drawn to Wally West. Also, that's another big factor in why Spidey is my favorite, but We'll stay on the flash for now. I silently hated how he wasn't treated with a lot of reverence by the rest of the universe, but when we got to a better world on Justice League, where they posited that the Flash was the moral center of the team, I felt really validated somehow. Same way I initially felt when reading New Avengers because I felt like nobody took Spidey seriously, but again, this is about the Flash. Back then, I didn't know much about merchandise sales or character popularity or editorial mandates, so I took every media property at face value. I genuinely thought I was the only kid in the world who identified with Wally West and Peter Parker. Remember how being a fan felt back before all this online discourse where you didn't know anything about the creative process or quarterly sales reports? Cartoons almost felt like documentaries because you could not imagine that there would be people behind the scenes who had other motives outside of the integrity of a story. The systems in place created a feeling of trust but I will get to that shortly. Around 2012, I discovered this show called Young Justice. As I've mentioned in a previous video, I instantly connected with Kid Flash for the same reasons I connected with the older version of Wally West in the Justice League animated series. He didn't take things too seriously ah, the Eiffel Tower and, the ever -romantic city of life. and he played off Robin really well. Such a likable character. Then came the subsequent season, which ended with Wally sacrificing himself during a doomsday event. Wally was a much slower flash in Young Justice, which made him oddly endearing to me, even though that directly contrasted the comic book Wally West, whose run saw the introduction of several flash concepts, but avid DC fans will already know why that decision was made. Malice aside, this decision humanized him a lot more than Barry Allen, whose speed had to be nerfed for any of his battles to make sense. And as much as I loved the Mark Waid Impulse comics, which focused on Bart Allen and made me a huge Humberto Ramos apologist, I always felt like Impulse was added to Young Justice so that Barry and Bart could both dunk on Wally some more for being slow. You getting any of this? Every fifth word, maybe. Sorry, got sidetracked. You on board? With what? I heard something about funnel cake. Just follow our lead, kid. This is so humiliating. You know, because he didn't have the superior Allen genes, he was just a Kanye. Wake up, Mr. West, Mr. West. And not satisfied with dunking on him while he was alive, they inevitably got rid of Wally using the same excuse that he was just too slow. So back to the integrity of story and manipulation by behind the scenes actors. Wally West was my first Flash, but I later discovered that he was created the exact same way as Barry Allen. He was supposed to be a sidekick, but he was just a younger duplicate of Barry before he got his own suit. After the death of Barry Allen in the Crisis on Infinite Earth comic miniseries, Wally took over as the main Flash. This draws an almost direct parallel to the character I promised not to talk about negatively anymore. Miles was birthed after the death of Peter Parker in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics and had an almost identical origin. 
The reason I came to know all this about Wally West was, I started noticing a lot of character assassinations of The Flash, specifically Wally West who I grew up with and came to really connect with, so I decided to look into why this was happening. After I found out how Barry Allen died in the comics, the decision on Young Justice made a lot more sense as an editorial revenge decision. Although even then, this was a worse death than Barry because Barry died a heroic death but Wally died because he was too slow. It wasn't even clear whether his sacrifice was necessary. It would be like starting a series with Miles Morales, only to kill him off later the same way Bendis did to Peter in Ultimate Spider-Man, but with the added caveat of Miles died because he was just not as capable as Peter. As much as I dislike Miles, I would never greenlight such a spiteful creative decision for him. But that's when everything clicked for me on how much the older generation hated Wally for the same reasons I hate Miles. And funnily enough, in the comics they even pulled a Miles Morales on Wally West, who was a Miles Morales on Barry Allen, by erasing him and creating Wallace West, who was an inclusive version of Wally. Derivatives of derivatives are always fun, especially when you can't even be bothered to substantially change the name. Just confirming, I'm here before they kill off Miles Morales in favor of Millie Morales or something, a female spider girl from Nigeria. Once you start on that path that is illuminated by lack of originality, all you can do is continue piling on until the whole universe is full of speedsters. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. But hey, I guess it worked in John Wick, right? And this is where I ultimately feel conflicted. The very same opposition to lack of originality that informs my whole approach to creativity and enjoyment of works of fiction also happened to be the reason my favorite DC character was created. Now, I'm not a hypocrite, so as much as I hate what the older generation does to Wally West from what I can only deduce as spite, I get it completely. Only, I wouldn't quite go about things in the same way that they have. While their approach is to bring Wally West out every so often and put him through the ringer or even humiliate him, my preference with a character I don't like would be to ignore him completely or pretend he doesn't exist. Or if you must, splinter him off to his own universe where he can create his own identity separate from the original. I'd rather do that than bring him out and introduce a character called Paul to steal his woman and piss everyone off. Oh, sorry. I'm mixing up my character assassinations by editorial. But I actually do agree with former DC co-publisher Dan DiDio's reasons for disliking Wally West because he could not exist without Barry Allen. That's one of the main reasons why I hate Venom, but we're not getting into that one. Such derivatives are usually just parasites because the original hero gains nothing from their existence. And sidekicks aside like Dick Grayson who has his own non-Batman based identity, or Falcon who has his own unique identity as well, I think all characters should stand on their own with unique origins that don't leech off more popular characters or brands. It's kind of like the X-Men or the Wu-Tang Clan. They work together as a group but they are very distinct individuals. Imagine if all the X-Men had the exact same powers like these superhero families. 5 Wolverines, 6 Gambits or 7 Rogues. It completely kills the mystique of the character and destroys the dynamic of the group. And as if it's not very obvious, but I'll say it anyway because this is the internet, I would dislike Miles as well if he was white or pink or purple. My beef with the character has nothing to do with who he is, but more of what he represents. I've already explained in another video how he could have worked well without any affiliation to Spider-Man or Spider-based powers, and he would probably have become my favorite character after Spidey. But ultimately my point is this, I miss the time before everything necessitated a meta view of the media we're consuming through the lens of the writer's preferences or politics. A time when you could just trust that the integrity of the story was driving every decision made by the characters as well as the direction of all the events. In all honesty, this is why I've really pulled back on Marvel and DC Comics to really focus on creating my own books. The MCU seems to think it's coming back but even if they were to return with 5 Winter Soldier quality movies, the messy events of Phase 4 have destroyed my investment in this universe. While Wally West will always be my favorite Flash because Barry has the charisma of a plank of wood, no offense, 
If I could flashpoint paradox my way back in time and erase every duplicate of an established character including Wally, I probably still would. People will undoubtedly look at everything we would lose as a result of this, but the real question should be, what would we have gained that we didn't? All the space that is taken up by mantle thieves and duplicates and derivatives of derivatives could potentially have been filled by amazing original characters, but we will never know. Some other multiverse is probably experiencing that entertainment utopia while we sit here with all this slop. The amount of spite and abuse that Wally West is put through today makes me wish that he was never created to begin with. You'd rather just put him out of his misery instead of torturing him every chance you get. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. So this video could have been a long tweet if I'm being honest, but I wanted to have a point of reference next time someone sees my Spider-Man videos and asks me about Wally West. Like why don't you even ask me about Ben Riley instead? Anyway, I'm rather busy at the moment and struggling to find time to make YouTube videos, so I could not really deep dive on this topic the way I would have wanted to. But let me know what you think about the Flash family and all these comic book redundancies. Who is your favorite Flash and why and I will see you in the next one. Peace.